Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Hellmouth Hotline. I'm your host, Rodney Stewart, and uh, we're getting on it for Halloween once more. I haven't uploaded in about a week. I'm sorry about that, and I have taken a, well, a severe dose of the flu right now, and uh, I was kind of worried that it was uh, maybe the other virus, but, you know, taste and smell is okay. So it seems to be okay, um, but as you can hear... The voice is a little bit in the, the suffering side, so we're going to get into uh, Buffy for this episode. Uh, we're on the season three right now, and this is episode two, Dead Man's Party. Yeah, guys, so at the end of uh, the last episode, uh, Buffy arrived back home. Uh, the season opened up of her running away from her past, and uh, she was in... Los Angeles, and she had her little adventure in episode one, and at the end of it, decided to go back home. So we seen her coming back to her mother at the end of the last episode, and her mother just embracing her in a hug. So this episode here is the aftermath, essentially, for Buffy and her her choices in season two, and uh, you know just the fallout of everything that's happening in her own personal life. And you know that's a lot. Of this episode but of course you need some supernatural stuff in there as well so we've got a like a zombie voodoo mask in this episode causing a bit of trouble and uh yes it's all pretty much the majority of the episode it's all relational sort of stuff uh, at the beginning of the episode uh joyce is hanging up a nigerian mask given to her by a, a gallery friend uh at Giles' apartment, Buffy avoids most questions about her summer while Giles hides his relief at her return. Everybody's glad to see her back, but they're just, they're all hiding behind their own feelings of hurt and whatnot. They don't want to be putting too much pressure on her, but Buffy is feeding the, the cold shoulder, essentially, throughout the majority of this episode. Um, of course, now that she's back... Joyce wants to get her back into high school. She takes Buffy to see Principal Snyder, who takes a vindictive pleasure in refusing to lift her expulsion. Uh, Buffy meets this friend, Pat, uh, a member of Joyce's book club, who comments on Buffy's recent behaviour and its impact on Joyce. You know, it's just everybody seems to be putting like the guilt trip on Buffy in this episode. You know, fair play to them. You know, she messed up, and she has to deal with this sort of stuff. Um, Joyce decides, you know, it might be a good idea to invite Xander, Willow, Jade, everybody over to the house for dinner. And she sends Buffy down to the basement to get their their company plates. You know, it's I kind of chuckled at that there, because uh, that's a huge thing in Northern Ireland as well. Back in the day, there was some plates and cups and whatnot, even in our house, that were not used unless there was people coming to visit. Uh, it's just a thing that was done. I don't know if people still do that sort of stuff these days, but we did at a time. But when Buffy goes down to the basement to get these company plates, uh, she finds a dead cat in the basement, and her and Joyce bury it in the garden. But that night, the Nigerian masks, eyes started to glow in the wall, and Joyce's bedroom and the cat that they buried earlier in the day is resurrected, reanimated, and it takes its way out of the earth and off it goes. Uh, the return of the cat shocks Buffy and Joyce, they get come straight back to the house and uh, they freak out, of course, as you do, you find this dead cat that was falling apart, you go and bury it, and the next day this thing turns up at the door again. Alive and well, essentially. Uh, Giles arrives to collect it for study. And he notices the mask on the wall. But before having to remain... Before he leaves, he has to remind Buffy that she is not allowed on school ground. She was going to go with him back to the library. Just like the old days, start researching the stuff. But, you know, he's just like, no, you're expelled. Uh, Snyder doesn't want you on the school property. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just more of the guilt pile up on Buffy throughout the episode. Um, at school, Buffy's friends decide to throw 
or a party. Uh, the discussion, discussion distracts Giles from a page showing the Nigerian mask as he's doing his research. They're all having this chat about what they're going to do with Buffet and the decide in this party. Uh, so the party kicks off that night and overwhelmed by the noisy party, Buffy tries in vain to talk to Willow. Uh, Willow kind of, you know, everything's okay, but kind of brushes it off. More or less, uh, she actually, Buffy actually overhears Joyce telling Pat that how tough Buffy's return has been on her. Uh, combined with the coldness of her friends and the problems of school, Buffy decides it was a mistake to have come back home and she starts packing to run away again. Uh, of course, over at the library then, Giles is horrified by what he learns about the mask and he tries to phone Buffy's house but uh, the party goers feel the relay has a message. Uh, this guy answers the phone and Giles is like, I need to talk to Buffy. And the guy is like, buddy? And he's like, no, Buffy. And the guy, he starts shouting around the party, I need to talk to a buddy. Is there a buddy here? And of course there's nobody there. And he hangs up the phone and Giles is like, you get the wrong house. Um, driving to Buffy's house, Giles hits a man on the road and knocks him down. And he gets out of the car to see if he's okay, but he finds the man is actually reanimated corpse. Just like the cat. Uh, Giles barely escapes as bodies rise over Sunnydale. Um, they're, they're basically attracted towards the mask in Buffy's house. Uh, before he can escape, he has to actually hotwire his own car because... Uh, and I tend to do this if I get out of the car to even just to go and check something outside it I turn the engine off and take the keys on me a lot of times Giles does this and of course when he's it's like you know uh, army of the dead or something like that there like he's stuck in his own car it's starting to be reanimated corpses he needs to get out of there he realises that the keys are lying on the ground outright knock the guy down and uh, he has to hotwire his own car to get away, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Willow finds Buffy in the house packing to leave and starts berating her for all the pain and worry she caused, explaining that she and the rest of the Scoobies had tough things to deal with as well as Buffy. Buffy and Joyce argue in the midst of the party, like Joyce walks in between this argument uh, with Buffy and Willow, Willow's going to town on her at this point. And Joyce sees the bag and clothes on it, and like she freaks out again. And uh, Buffy like runs down into the sitting room in the midst of the party, and Joyce follows her in there, and just everything stops dead. The music and everything, and they Joyce decides, right, we're going to town right now. We're talking this out, whether you want to hear it or not. Uh, Xander sides with Joyce against Buffy. Uh, Oz tries to break it up as their argument grows heated uh, the revenants crash through the windows and doors causing the Scoobies to immediately stop arguing that's this is a great scene in the, the episode uh, when all the tensions between Buffy and her friends finally surface Buffy, her friends and her mother they're all in the sitting room they're going to town on her uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar's acting in this episode is absolutely fantastic and she hasn't she's got a lot of stuff that she knows about what happened at the end of season 2 that the rest of the gang have got no idea about at this stage and she's finding it really difficult to deal with her choices and you know she well at the end of the day she actually had no choice when it came to Angel and Akafla at the end of season two. Um, nobody knows that the the spell to restore Angel's soul actually worked and he was restored back to the good version of himself before Buffy had to kill him anyway to save the planet and uh, you know she's still carrying this all and trying to deal with that guilt. Um, you know, everybody is going to town on horror but you know how her decisions have affected them, so it's it's a really, really great 
sequence in the episode uh, and again Sarah Michelle Geller acting that is absolutely fantastic in this episode and uh, you know it starts getting heated that heated to that point at this point that you know Willow actually says you know talking this things aren't no, talking things out aren't working things out here let's just you know let's try some violence instead you know this, at this stage uh, Xander and Buffy are kind of squaring up to each other in the middle of the sitting room uh, just as Willow says let's try some violence like the windows and doors start breaking in in the house with all these zombies coming looking for this mask so everybody stops arguing and they have to band together to combat the threat S- several guests are killed and uh, reanimated of course in the bedroom Willow checks Pat's pulse she gets killed as well the friend of Joyce she gets killed during this attack and finds she's dead as well uh, Giles of course gets to the house he tells Oz and Cordelia about the mask containing the powers of the zombie demon Uva Mubani I think I have actually said a name properly for a change I'm not going to try to repeat that again because I'll probably screw it up <laughs> but uh, Uva Nupani there you are, that kind of screwed up that day. Nubani, which means evil eye. Uh, Pat's body in the bedroom comes to life as a zombie. And uh, New Zealand, or, or sorry, uh, Giles, when he's explaining to Oz and Cordelia about this mask, he's like, you know, if one of these zombies puts this mask on, it's going to become the demon incarnate. So it's, you know, it's going to be far, far worse than anything they've got here so far. But of course, Pat, dead in the bedroom along with him. She's the only zombie that's actually close to the mask. And she actually gets to put it on and becomes the demon incarnate. Uh, of course, now uh, Buffy and her face off as her being the, the main demon in this episode. And uh, Buffy grabs her and throws her and herself through the bedroom window out into the garden and uh, Giles has worked out of course as he does uh, that the, all the power lies in the eyes of the mask so he fighting off some demons in the, the house gets Oz drawn out to relay the message to Buffy but Buffy uh, is a couple of steps ahead this point in the episode she's actually realised what's happening she's seen when they when Pat put on the mask and uh, if she looked at anybody she could control them if she made eye contact with them so she was trying her hardest not to make eye contact while fighting with the demon and when Oz comes out to relay the message the demon turns its eyes away from Buffy and she lifts a, a shovel the shovel they use to bury the cat earlier on uh, she plunges the shovel into its eyes and it basically vanishes along with all the other zombies every body that was reanimated disappears along with this demon at the end of the episode and uh, the anger uh, that Joyce and the other Scoobies felt towards Buffy dissipates whenever you know they, they see that you know Buffy's back she's doing her thing it's uh you know let's just try our hardest to let bygones be bygones and just move on along with it now i love this but at the end of the episode the next day jades tries to convince snyder to let buffy return and when he refuses jades applies a little intimidation and uh it's so subtly done but uh you know there is a way to threaten people and a way not to threaten people and it's very hard to get that balance right in a movie or a TV show but you know it's you know when it's more or less just the way Giles does it in this episode is like he doesn't grab Snyder by the throat but he he gets him by the the short collar and he kind of just presses him not forcefully but he applies enough pressure on him just to hold him against the the filing cabinet in his office and he's like he says to him 
would you like me to uh, convince you? And that's it. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> there's a few threats in the episode to Snyder as well, but going to the the city mayor on Buffy's case, and, and each time he's like, you know, wouldn't that be interesting? So they going from memory here. Season three is one that uh, is not really that fresh in my mind. It's been a lot of years since I watched this series, but uh, I do remember the mayor being uh, one of the the big bads in the the series at one point. So I'm guessing that's the end of season three. So uh, you know you're getting that within these first couple of episodes, and even in season two, there's a few episodes there where you kind of got the gist of the mayor going to be a bigger character in the upcoming episodes. So that's where we're at. In this episode, um, in a coffee shop at the end of the episode, Willow she's telling Buffy about her experiences in Dublin and witchcraft, which is going to play heavily into the series uh, more and more as we go forward. As we do know, uh, at the end of season two, uh, the witchcraft kind of took over Willow and restoring the angel's soul. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Again, it's been that long since I checked out this see, this actual season. Probably season 2 uh, is where I kind of dropped off originally. Whenever it was been aired on TV. And I kind of just jumped in here and there throughout the rest of the, the seasons. But uh, I've seen the majority of them. But uh, I'm very, very much in the dark for a lot of this season. Um... Buffy apologises for not being there to support her. Willow forgives her, of course. And the episode ends with Buffy and Willow trading playful insults because uh, because of the situation. Willow's got the moral high ground over Buffy and she's kind of making the most of it and giving her little jabs. And, and uh, finally, by the end of the episode, the two of them can be given each other friendly jabs back and forth. It's a great, great little episode. And, uh, yes, it was all more relational than anything else. Just exploring the the backlash of her own personal friendships and the relationship with her mother. And, of course, Giles is her watcher. You know, it's, it was a very, very well-written episode. And I fairly enjoyed it. This was written by Marty Nixon. And... Uh, it aired October 6th, 1998. Gosh, it doesn't seem that long ago. It really doesn't. Uh, it's weird whenever this show came out. I was actually... I'm actually two years younger than Sarah Michelle Geller. So, you know, when this show came out, I was kind of pretty much in the the age range of the people that was watching this, uh, more or less and uh, it's just weird whenever you start to look back in these here shows and you start thinking to yourself, gosh I was just out of high school I was into my early working life uh, I was dating before I got married and whatnot. not, and just uh, just a weird time in your life where you just, you know you're feeling, you know you're at the beginning of your adult journey and uh, you're kind of, I don't know, you're kind of watching the shows I guess here where people are like in similar sort of stages of their lives and whatnot and it's just, that's really weird to sit back now as a 42 year old looking back in the show and it really, honest to God, it does not feel as long, I don't even want to start to add up the years here because it's like 20 20 plus years at this point and uh, time does fly but anyway that's going to do it for this episode I am pretty surprised that I have been able to talk as long as I have here in this episode because uh, as I said I'm fighting some sort of cold sort of thing here so you, like the, the voice is I've got that sexy friggin' deep voice going at the minute. <laughs> I should hire myself out for 
voiceovers for movies. <laughs> Movie trailers. <coughs> <coughs> there we go. <coughs> God, there we are. I thought I was going to get through without that, but we got it at the end of the episode. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back tomorrow with, uh, what is it? A Nightmare on Elm Street, part two. So I uh, look forward to seeing you here again for that. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. This has been a production of Coins Edge Media. Thank you so much for listening.